The Lakers don't play till tomorrow, but I couldn't wait to talk about them. After the two games that they've really all had together as a member of this new Lakers team, they've won both of them and they have looked good in both of them. They had an absolute blowout against the Warriors. I think that was two nights ago. Yeah, it was two nights ago. And man, did they look good. LeBron had like 13 points. Anthony Davis didn't have much more. It was a pretty bad game for both of them, but it wasn't really because they didn't need to play a ton. They both played under 30 minutes, and everyone else in that roster played great. It felt good. This new Lakers team legitimately seems like if they are healthy and they keep getting this chemistry building up that already feels like they have, if they get into the playoffs, they're going to be dangerous. And I think it was Nick Young that said, if the Lakers play the Nuggets in the playoffs, those Nuggets are going to lose. That's not exactly how he said it, but what he said was the Nuggets would lose to the Lakers in the playoffs. And I don't even think that's that bold of a take after seeing how good this Lakers team looks in the past two games. I believe they're on a two-game winning streak. It might be more than that, but I think it's two. And I know two's not much at all. But when was the last time this Lakers team blew someone out? That's what Anthony Davis said to LeBron and LeBron said, it's been a while, or he was like, never. He was like, when Anthony Davis was like, when was the last time we were up 26 or whatever they were up? And LeBron was like, never, because they haven't really been up by that much this year. Maybe like once or twice, but this one felt like the good one, like the good win when LeBron and AD didn't really do much, and Malik Beasley was the guy. He had like 26, 28, something like that. That dude is a flamethrower. He can throw anything up and it goes in. It's it's ridiculous. I remember when LeBron played with Kyle Korver. Kyle Korver didn't get a ton of run, but when he did, he would come off that screen and it felt like it was going in. It felt like it was automatic. J.R. Smith, another guy that it felt like he could throw up a bad shot and it would go in. I would say J.R. Smith is more comparable to Malik Beasley. But Malik Beasley can also have like an off night. So I'm assuming he will probably have an off night off night coming up soon, but he's still his off nights, I know he's the type of guy that's going to have a really, really, really off night. But the thing is, the Lakers have so many other options to go to. If he's having an off night, take him out. Take him out. And there are so many, so many other guys that you can put in that lineup that are going to do so, so good. And the point of this video is to talk about how the Lakers don't need Russell Westbrook and how he was a negative asset to that team. I truly, truly believe that. They are playing so good with this new roster that I think Russell Westbrook was legitimately hurting that team. So let's talk about all the moves that really matter in this trade. Devon Reed, not going to talk about him because I'm kind of surprised the Lakers kept him around on the roster. He, they don't really need him, but they also don't really not need him. They have an open roster spot still, so if they really wanted to sign someone, they still could and they wouldn't need to wave Devon Reed, but he's definitely the guy on the chopping block, let's be honest. So, first let's start with Malik Beasley, like we just talked about. Dude can shoot the lights out. He can shoot the lights out, and he really knows how to play with a team. I didn't know if he was going to be one of those guys that comes in and just chucks it whenever he wants to, which, yes, he is, but it's in a good way, though. Like, it's, it's not like a... It's not like a Carmelo Anthony way where he gets the ball and you're like, dang it, he's going to shoot it. Like, it has a good chance of going in with Carmelo, but you know he's going to shoot it because when Carmelo was on the Lakers last year, if the ball got to him and he put the ball on the floor, like he dribbled it once, you're like, okay, he's going to try to make some space and shoot it. Malik Beasley is just going to shoot it like on a catch and shoot, and it's going to be automatic. So I love him. I love that fit for him. Trading away Juan Descano Anderson, Damian Jones, Russell Westbrook, and I guess Patrick Beverly too. To get somehow make that into a Malik Beasley just doesn't even make sense to me. Like even if they were just a Malik Beasley, I would still be like, that's still like that's a pretty good trade to be honest with you. Because he is just such a good shooter, which is what the Lakers need. Now D'Angelo Russell, yes, I know he's hurt. So since he is hurt, I understand that he might miss some time, but really, I don't think he misses much more than one game, maybe two, because I don't think it was that severe of an ankle sprain. I really don't. I think that it was just like some 
average little ankle roll, and he'll be back at it very, very soon. So I don't even, I'm not even worried about that. I don't even think it's going to be a big deal. Um, but the pick and roll with him and Anthony Davis is, is crazy. He can throw the lob, which I, I didn't really know because he's played with like Carl Anthony Towns, who I don't think he's like the biggest lob catcher. And then who else he played with? The Warriors. Not really anyone to throw lobs to on that team. They're not throwing a lob to Draymond Green. And then the Brooklyn Nets, like Jared Allen, I guess. But really, like, he can throw that lob to Anthony Davis. I love it. It's great. So he's a great fit there. He can also shoot the ball a lot better than Westbrook. So definitely an improvement, in my opinion, Um, because I think after this season, Westbrook is a veteran minimum player. Maybe some little team will give him a $5 million, like the, what is that called, mid-level exception. But I think that would be stupid. I think you would be a clown to do that. Um, that's how much I'm, I'm a West, Westbrookator. I think Westbrook is awful. So then let's move on to my favorite piece, probably Jared Vanderbilt. I know Jared Vanderbilt gets all the love in the world, but he deserves it and he deserves more. He is, he is all defensive level, level defender. And I don't think there's an argument to be made. He is such a good defender. It's ridiculous. He'll be guarding Luca tomorrow night. That's what Vogel said, which sounds wild because Vanderbilt is is a power forward. He's not a small forward. He's a power forward. And Luca might I guess he might be playing shooting guard now because Kyrie is there, but he's like a point guard shooting guard. Basically he's a point guard. And he is well he's six seven, so I guess that makes sense kind of Vanderbilt's probably at six nine, six ten, I don't really know. He's a pretty big guy. And yeah, he can't really shoot the ball much of it all. Like he he, he can shoot if you give it to him and he's like on the mid range or in the corner, like he might knock it down, but he's never really out there. He doesn't really need to be. He's always in like position to go get a rebound. And he does a lot. He's a great rebounder, always crashing the offensive boards. Those are my favorite players to see in the NBA players that crash the offensive boards. Cause they're makes such exciting plays and give you such a good momentum changing bucket for someone that crashes in and gets a board. And you're like, how did he get that? That is, that is crazy. And he's always in that dunker spot, and he gets a lot of dunks. He gets a lot of dunks. And then on the defensive end of the ball, he's just – it feels like no one ever scores on him. Yes, of course they do, but everyone gets scored on. It just doesn't ever feel like he does. He gets a lot of steals, a lot of deflections. That's probably the biggest thing is how many deflections he gets. So I am a huge Jared Vanderbilt fan. I think if you were to get two out of these three players – from trading all of those players, that would be a win. Even one, really, honestly, probably pretty good. And then you also got Mo Bamba, who I actually think is going to play a bigger role than I assumed. He's playing that backup center role, at least for now. It seems like Wendy Gabriel's always that guy that kind of gets, like, pushed over, which sucks because I think Wendy Gabriel's actually a pretty good player. But Mo Bamba's pretty dang good defensive player. I didn't know that. I didn't know how good of a shot blocker he was. He's a really, really good shot blocker that offensively kind of just like a, I guess like a JaVale McGee, like not even as like smooth offensively as JaVale McGee, maybe more like a, what's a good example? Um, DeAndre Jordan when he, oh, DeAndre Jordan when he first got to the Brooklyn Nets before it was a bad signing, I guess. Like, DeAndre Jordan, when he was not an all-star level player, where you can just kind of throw him the ball and he'll dunk it. And that's that's about it. But on the defensive end of the ball, he's going to be really good and he's going to get a couple blocks per game. Plus, he can shoot the three, which is so weird. It's so weird to me that you can just see Mo Bamba step out and just launch a three, and it might, like, it has a pretty good shot of going in. His form looks good. It doesn't look like a center's form. So that caught me very off guard. And all four of those players, I think, are pretty big successes. Obviously, it's the three that you got for Russell Westbrook that are the biggest successes, but Mo Bamba's no scrub either. He's a pretty good player. So I love this team. I definitely want to know what you guys have to say. I legit think this team could be a title contender, like legitimately a title contender. They have played just 
so good lately. And really, they are like two games back. I believe they're two games back of the seven seed. So that six seed's not really too far out of grasp. I know. I think, too, it is a stretch. But I don't think it's undoable. Like, I don't think it's to the point where it's like, okay, that's not happening. I think it's to the point where it's like, you got to win games. You've got to win games, and you got to hope that they lose games. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this Lakers team. Do you think that Russell Westbrook was a negative to this team? Because I do. I want to know your guys' thoughts. And then what are your expectations for this team? All right, that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, turn the notification bell to all. See you guys all later in the next video. Thank you guys for sticking around all the way to the end. See you guys in the next one, and peace. Okay, really quick, I wanted to say the reason I have been gone for a little bit is because I had another knee injury. This is my third one in like three, two, three years, and probably going to lead to more surgery. So wish me luck. See you guys in the next one. Peace.